Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be something very different. Today, I'm going to be getting ready, doing my makeup while discussing the Wagatha Christie case. The juiciest, gossip-laden, tea-spilling, drama-filled case of 2022 <laughs> so far. Now, of course, this style of video is heavily inspired by the incredible Bailey Sarian, who does her makeup and murder mystery series. It's just that this one is slightly less bloody, but nonetheless dramatic. A tale of two wags scorned, torn apart. So whose story do we believe? We're going to find out. If you have no idea what on earth I'm banging on about, don't worry. I'm going to be explaining it all. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm aware, I'm painfully aware, that a lot of my audience, the vast majority of my audience, are actually American. And so I have no idea how much you guys know, if anything, about this case, about these women, who they are, what is happening, what is going on. So I am going to explain, I mean, also, you could be from another country and have no idea who these women are or what's going on. I understand it. But I feel like the this has been all over the news in this country. I don't know how well known this story is in other places. So I'm gonna take you back. We're gonna start back in 2016-ish. I don't know actually where we're starting. We're starting a few years ago. Two very different women with one specific thing in common, their husbands are footballers. That's pretty much it. Colleen Rooney, wife of Wayne Rooney, England footballer very long-standing member of the England team, not without controversy in his life, it's fair to say. Colleen, definitely like the girl next door. And sure, she's now in a mansion next door, but she's a very like normal, down-to-earth kind of woman. She's a mother of many children. <laughs> four I think roughly and she's not certainly in like recent years she's not really one for like the glitz and glamour and like courting the press she's not one to be involved in a lot of like celebrity I feel like she did a bit more when they first were like around when they first had a high profile especially during like the the era of the wag when wags were like the thing but it's certainly in recent years she's pretty much just like a stay-at-home mum a normal mum who goes on holiday a lot more than the average mum but you don't really see or hear a lot about her only when it's in relation to like Wayne's misbehaviour do we see or hear from her in the press? Wayne and Colleen have been together, I think it was something like since they were 12, childhood sweethearts and yeah, just a very normal couple aside from the fact that Wayne is an absolute loose cannon and they have a lot of money and he's a footballer. But apart from that, very normal couple. Rebecca Vardy in the blue corner. <laughs> is the wife of Jamie Vardy, another England footballer. Now, a totally different kettle of fish from Colleen and far more of like the stereotypical wag persona. You know, she's been on lots of reality TV shows. She's definitely one who's sort of wanted to be in the public eye, regardless of what she may say. Her actions would tell you that she's one who sort of courts the media. She's always in the press. She's always up to something. She's always causing some kind of uproar. And this Wagatha Christie trial was certainly not the first time that Rebecca has like been involved in controversy, in drama. She's definitely one who has had similar issues with people before other people in the public eye. She's sold stories. She did a whole story selling a story to a newspaper about her ex Peter Andre. She's dated other celebrities. She's had high profile fallings out, one of which was with Sarah Harding, the late Sarah Harding from Girls Aloud, when Rebecca Vardy was apparently caught at like, was it the Brit Awards, some awards ceremony, rifling through Sarah Harding's handbag and trying to take photos of it? 
normal. So you could say that she's definitely a different ilk to Miss Colleen. She's definitely, you know, a bit more of the drama, a bit more courting the press, and a bit more of a controversial less sort of universally liked, let's say, than Colleen. Now, depending on whose side of the story you tend to believe, these women kind of had a different description of like their relationship prior to the events of 2019, which is what we're getting to. So Rebecca seems to think that they were like friends, like Bezzy's best mates, and Colleen seems to think they were more so acquaintances, but she was never like a big fan. She'd always had a bit of a vibe about Rebecca. She was always one of these people that, you know, you get on well with, you see them at an event, you say hi, you have a chat, maybe you send a text, you're on a couple of the same group chats on WhatsApp, you know, that's kind of what Colleen was describing their relationship at. You know, they were friendly, they interacted in a friendly way, but it seems like it was one of these people that you know you just have a vibe about. That's kind of what Colleen is, is giving as far as their relationship. I think Rebecca Vardy seems to have thought they were a bit closer than that. Colleen says otherwise. Just very different people, I guess. So it seems like around 2017, 2018, Colleen starts to think that there might be a rat among her friends because stuff that she posts on like her private Instagram stories, her friends only Instagram stories are getting back to the press and she starts to have suspicions. It seems like she pretty much immediately suspected it might be Rebecca Vardy. As I said, Rebecca Vardy has form. She has sold stories before on people. And yeah, I guess maybe they're just the, the vibes were telling Colleen, I suspect Rebecca Vardy. So what was happening was that Colleen was posting stuff like private stuff or pictures on her private Instagram that only her friends had permission to see and then it was like ending up in the sun that's what was going on so as I said she started to suspect that Rebecca Vardy may be the rat and she set about a trap to catch said rat and this is where this whole story just starts to get phenomenally hilarious and just bizarre like you couldn't write or make this up this is going to be a movie I'm 100% sure of it. So Colleen, as we now know her, daubed Wagatha Christie for this little number that she came up with. She plotted, she made a plan to catch the rat. And what she started doing is she started posting fake stories on her Instagram and she limited who could see these stories to one person. And it was, of course, Rebecca Vardy. So she went into her Instagram stories. You know you can stop people seeing your Instagram stories. So she had on her friends only list, she just put Rebecca on her friends list. And so no one else could see these stories other than Rebecca Vardy. And she posted a few little red herring stories to catch the rat. A few of these, this is what is so funny to me, is I saw these stories in the, in the news. And it is so funny that not only did she like catch the rat, but she also just made a mockery of like tabloid newspapers during this whole episode. So a few of these stories, one was just picture. So Colleen posted like a picture of her with her children in their matching PJs at Christmas. She posted that on her public Instagram, but on her private stories, she posted a picture of Wayne in these same matching PJs. And at the time, like they were separated because it was after like his 25th indiscretion with another lady. So they were like on a break, they were separated. Colleen had not let anyone know that they were like back together. They were working things out. So she posted on her private stories, a picture of Wayne in the same matching PJs in her bed with the kids. So it was like obvious they were back together. This ended up in the sun, this picture that she posted privately. Another story that she made up that made it into the press was that they went to America to look into having like choosing the gender of their next child. I think they've got four boys. So they made, she made up a story that they had gone to America to see if they could like make sure the next child was a girl, right? 
gender selection. She posted that, that ended up in the, in the papers. She also, there was like other stories. There was one, I think about a car accident. There was another about their new house having like flooding or something. There were a few little stories in there, none of which were real, all of which ended up in the Sun newspaper, despite Colleen only posting them on her private Instagram with only one account able to see these stories and that was Rebecca Vardy. So she tested this out, she did a few stories, yep, every single one of these has ended up in the paper and now she knows who must be doing this because only one account has seen these stories and that is the account of Rebecca Vardy. So in October 2019, Colleen decided to out the rat and she posted this statement to Twitter. Let's read it together. For a few years now, someone who I trusted to follow me on my personal Instagram account has been consistently informing the Sun newspaper of my private posts and stories. There has been so much information given to them about me, my friends and my family, all without my permission or knowledge. After a long time of trying to figure out who it could be, for various reasons, I had a suspicion. To try and prove this, I came up with an idea. I blocked everyone from viewing my Instagram stories except one account. Those on my private account must have been wondering why I haven't had stories on there for a while. Over the past five months, I have posted a series of false stories to see if they made their way into the Sun newspaper, and you know what? They did. The story about gender selection in Mexico, the story about returning to TV, and then the latest story about the basement flooding in my new house. It's been tough keeping it to myself and not making any comment at all, especially when the stories have been leaked. However, I had to. Now I know for certain which account slash individuals it came from. I have saved and screenshotted all the original stories which clearly show just one person has viewed them. It's... Rebecca Vardy's account. <laughs> oh my God. So this was dramatic, okay? This was a dramatic day for, for all of us. I remember seeing this. I don't think I followed Colleen or anything at the time, but I it obviously was like trending a lot, like instantly. <laughs> Social media lost its marbles. This was two like, really quite high profile, you know, wags in the UK. And this was beef and it was tea and we were all very excited to be a part of it. And it's also just the drama, Mick. We just love it. It was the fact that, that with no warning, she's just walloped this on Twitter and we were shook to our very core. These are, I mean, it's not like she's being accused of, of murder or anything, but this is an accusation of like insane behavior, isn't it? I mean, this is just not normal. Like, what are you doing? What? A crazy person. It's not like this woman needs the money from the sun. This woman is absolutely minted, multi, multi, multi-millionaire. Like, what is the reason for this behavior? What is this madness? And you know, not so much Colleen, because like I said, she was definitely just living her best life on Barbados beaches these days. But Rebecca was like, she was all over the press. She was a pretty high profile celeb, you know, obviously like C-list, but she was on the list is what I'm saying. So this was all pretty shocking, you know, this Wagatha Christie. Also, it was just the lengths Colleen had taken to find out who this rat was, was like somewhat genius. So we were all just very impressed by the detective skills. What I think it's important to point out about this statement that Colleen made is if you thought she was stupid, this statement was very smart because that last line did not say it was Rebecca Vardy. It said it was Rebecca Vardy's account. Genius. How can you say someone, accuse someone of defamation or of libel if they didn't say it was you, they said it was your account. And let's be honest, that's a fact. She's saying she only let one account see these stories. It was your account. She never said it was you. Sneaky. I'm 100% confident that before that statement went out, Colleen had already consulted legal advice. I'm 100% positive that's why that was worded in the way that it was to just cover her back, that she was stating a fact. And although obviously the implication was 
that Rebecca Vardy is the snake. It's a very clever little choice of words, isn't it? So the reaction was insane. The press lost their marbles. The sun was presumably fuming <laughs> that they had been misled. And social media was aghast. Now, I should point out at this point that Re uh, Rebecca Vardy was in fact pregnant at the time which this, this Twitter post went out, obviously accusing or exposing her for what has gone on. And this was mainly Rebecca's beef, was one that she said that Colleen had never asked her and she was like, I, she released a statement on Twitter responding to this ac accusation, obviously denying it, saying it wasn't me governor, and that she wished Colleen had spoken to her rather than just posting this on Twitter. But the thing is, Colleen had actually posted that she thought someone was leaking, someone on her friends list was leaking her stories. I feel like she'd given Rebecca some warnings before this shot was fired. Like she had said on her friends Instagram again, oh, someone on here is leaking stories. And to me, it's like, if it was you, like maybe at that point you realize, oh, she's kind of onto what's going on. You'd stop doing it. I feel like Colleen gave her a few warnings, gave her a few opportunities to stop it. And Rebecca did it. And let's face it, essentially what Colleen did here was give Rebecca a taste of her own medicine. You know, if Rebecca has really been selling stories on Colleen's private life from her private stories as like a trusted friend or someone who at least is on her trusted friends list on Instagram, and you've been taking that and selling it to the newspaper, Colleen essentially did the same thing back to Rebecca. She essentially sold a story on Rebecca that she believed to be true. And Rebecca did not like the taste of her own medicine. So it appears that they may have had some conversations that we don't know about now. After this, maybe there's some text messages went back and forward, maybe with some conversations were tried to be had, but no kind of amicable ending or conclusion could be had. Rebecca did go on Loose Women and also made statements on her social media, basically saying that because of this tweet, she had received horrendous trolling, including threats to her children and her unborn child's life which is obviously utterly disgusting and disgraceful. And she essentially accused Colleen of putting like the health of her and her unborn child at risk with all the stress that this caused her and all of the abuse that her and her family received during this time. Now that bit of this story is obviously very sad and very serious, like it's no joke, you know, when someone is pregnant, she certainly did have like the wrath of the world rain down on her during that time. However, a side note of that is that Rebecca Vardy is no stranger to media attention. She's kind of encouraged it her whole life. She's been on social media and she has a lot of followers, a very high profile husband, high profile account herself that she has created and encouraged. And I'm 100% sure that she is very, very used to dealing and experiencing trolls, even at the level of which I've described, the death threats, the you know, really offensive, terrible comments and messages and things like that, that celebrities who are disliked, she was never a popular character. She's always been, you know, a villain, a villain story. 100% she was always receiving this type of trolling and abuse. Doesn't make it okay. Doesn't mean it's not upsetting, especially when you're pregnant. But I do feel like she, this certainly wasn't her first experience of that. You know, she was always a very unpopular wag with like the football fans. She's always had a lot of nastiness, a lot of abuse, a lot of chants about her to her husband whenever he was playing a lot of negative stories. So I do feel like actually she had ways to protect herself. She certainly could have come straight off social media and that would have been the end of it. She wouldn't have seen it. So I, I do sort of have sympathy for the fact that she, you know, it was a hard time, a stressful time while she was pregnant. But I also do think there's a very easy way to not see any of this stuff. And that's, you know, simply get off social media and she wouldn't have had to deal with it. But luckily, Rebecca made it through her pregnancy and her baby and everything was born healthily and everything was, thank goodness, all fine. So she did go on Loose Women, like I said, she spoke about it and she gave interviews, all swearing her innocence. And her excuse was, her explanation, if you will, was that lots, lots of people, loads of people have access to her social media. Now, 
that's strange to me. I can understand like one person, potentially maybe your husband and maybe your assistant as you know, she is a minor celebrity. She did have a manager and that's important to know. So you can understand her, you know, maybe her agent and maybe like, I don't know, a friend or your husband might have access to your Instagram account. That's probably about it. I don't know why there would be like dozens of people who would have access. Like that's a bizarre thing to do. And also just, it doesn't seem like very normal. Like I feel like the vast majority of celebrity accounts, even like the biggest accounts would probably only have like their agent or their manager or maybe a social media manager have access to all their accounts. So I'm not sure how many people she really thinks have access to this account, but it did seem like during the case, actually there was only one other person who had access to these accounts and that was Miss Watt. So Caroline Watt was Rebecca Vardy's agent. I say was because she isn't anymore. But this was a close friend of Rebecca Vardy, also her agent. So apparently she had all the passwords to Rebecca's social media. And so it was implied certainly quite heavily that Rebecca was essentially trying to lay the blame for this whole situation at Ms. Watt's door. Initially, she, Rebecca set out basically saying she wanted like an apology and a retract, retraction from Colleen, which obviously she wasn't going to get. You know, Colleen is a scouser. If you think that woman's going to apologize to you when she doesn't think she's in the wrong, <laughs> she's not. So Rebecca Vardy, having not received her apology and her retraction, decided to sue Colleen for libel, she was going to take her to court. Now, Colleen says at this point, presumably when she received the notice, I'm suing you, she says that she tried on multiple occasions to like keep this out of court, to settle it out of court. She felt like it would be embarrassing for both parties and just an insane waste of money, which let's face it, it was. This also didn't go down very well in the press that these like multi, multi millionaires were going to court and taking like court time up on like such a frivolous, ridiculous, he said, she said situation that ultimately none of us really cared that much about. It was just slightly funny for a few hours. So Colleen tried to resolve it out of court. Presumably she probably wanted Rebecca to admit to what she'd done publicly and apologize. Rebecca probably wanted an apology and Colleen to say oh wait I was wrong you didn't do it neither woman was going to budge so indeed three years later almost it went to court and finally we got to see this all play out hear the evidence the case of Wagatha Christie came to trial the outfits were banging Colleen turned up literally every day I think with Wayne in tow by her side obviously supporting his wife and her cause to be the next Agatha Christie. Colleen rocked up every single day, very businesslike. She had a folder with her full of screenshots and evidence. Apparently she spent the entire time she was in court scribbling notes frantically. I'd love to know what they said, wouldn't you? Imagine. Rebecca, the by, by contrast, I don't think we saw Jamie Vardy in court more than one time. If, if, if I'm wrong, please tell me, but he was certainly not in attendance the vast majority of the dates. He maybe rocked up once or twice, which I know people were saying, oh, you know, he was busy playing football, <laughs> presumably. But let's face it, that did not look good. I feel like he should have moved heaven and earth to be there because it did not look good that Wayne's rocking up every day supporting his missus and clearly, you know, the cause and Rebecca's like there on her own. It kind of looks like everyone abandoned her, you know. So Rebecca's case is, I know nothing about this. I don't know who did it, but it was not me. And I got dragged into all of this while pregnant. It put my child and me at risk. But let's be honest, you know, Colleen also had all these stories that up to the point at which she started trying to catch the rat out, she had true stories leaked about her by a so-called friend during very hard times for herself. So, you know, it very much is, if you can't take it, you shouldn't be dishing it out, some would say. I mean, I don't know if we have time for like a day by day, blow by blow account of how the court case went down but I will summarize it by telling you it was an utter shambles on the part of Rebecca Vardy. It was a humiliating whitewash. 
in Colleen's favour. Rebecca was shown to be lying about numerous things and numerous accounts that were false. Miss Watt, who was it, who was originally going to be a witness and gave a witness statement, basically explaining that it was not me, Governor, and it was nothing to do with Rebecca either. She ended up withdrawing her statement and not appearing and basically declining to be a witness when originally she was going to be. I feel like this started off like Caroline Watt thought originally, oh, I'm just going to defend my friend and my client. And then when it ended up actually going to court, she was like, no, I'm out. This is just too much for me. When it got serious, she obviously was not willing to stand up in court and testify, knowing that actually she could go to jail in contempt of court if she was shown to be lying. So that did not look good, let's just say that. There were all kinds of absolutely bizarre goings on during this court, this case, right? Caroline Watt also claimed that the phone on which the evidence was held of all of Rebecca and Caroline's text messages between each other, where Colleen side believe, you know, that there would be text messages showing Rebecca sending Caroline the stories and, you know, selling them to the son and there would be conversations about that. Caroline claimed that this phone with all of this evidence on, wait for it, was dropped in the sea. How convenient could you get? I mean, obviously it's not convenient to drop your phone in the sea, but you see what I'm saying. I've never heard anything like this before. Oh, I'd love to show you my phone with all of the evidence on, but you'll never guess what happened. I dropped it in the sea. Ah, oh, I mean, it's ridiculous. She also claimed that she changed her phone around the time of these accusations. Again, so convenient. So a lot of this was lost because, you know, she changed her phone. So it all accidentally got wiped, as did a laptop. I think a, there was a laptop that had like all of its history and everything wiped just as the court was about to look at the contents. I mean, it was just, beyond a joke. And aside from that, you know, Rebecca Vardy's whole reputation just got dragged through the mud, which is presumably why Colleen was trying to you know, warn her, this is not gonna go well for you. And it did not. You know, it was shown that Rebecca had form for selling stories. She had sold the story about her ex, Peter Andre, being um, penally challenged shall we say. She also tried to sell a story about another footballer, I think a teammate of Jamie's, her husband, who had been uh, arrested for drink driving. She called up and tried to sell that story to the son, I believe, but apparently they already knew about that story, so she was unsuccessful in selling that one. It was also discussed in the court trial that Rebecca Vardy had tried to sell a story on another wag, Dan Danielle Lloyd, sorry, who was on holiday and had had a miscarriage. So she, there just seems to be like no limits to this woman's like moral compass, to be honest. These stories that she was selling on people, you know, about hardships with marriages, miscarriages. These were, you know, people who trusted her and saw her as a friend. I mean, it's just really disgusting. So it kind of loses the weight of her argument that it was unfair to do this to her when this is what she was doing to other people. Not that anyone would wish harm or stress or upset on someone who is pregnant and carrying a baby, but at the same time, this behavior just can't, you know, you can see why Colleen couldn't just let this fly, to be honest. So fair to say that the case just was an utter misguided disaster for Ms. Vardy. This was just a really bad idea ever coming to trial. It was a stupid thing to do. It was, I mean, she must know she did it, right? It's just, there's just no possible way she didn't do it based on all of this evidence and all of the statements and all of the things that went on trying to destroy evidence, which is so convenient. The fact that, you know, her agent, who's the other person who's potentially involved, just didn't want anything to do with her anymore and just left her, you know, had to hang out to dry. There's no way that at a bare minimum, Rebecca did not know that this was going on and was not helping and feeding into it. Worst case scenario, Rebecca was just doing all of this and she then tried to pin it on her friend and her agent. I think best case scenario, she was aware that Caroline Watt was feeding these stories to the press and she was helping her do that and supplying her with the stories. That's to me 
what I think is going on here. So to then actually take this to court and try to sue Colleen is really odd to me. Like, what does she think? Well, how does she think this was gonna go? Has she, is she one of these people who's just like lied so much that she's actually convinced herself that she's telling the truth? I don't know. Very strange. The whole court case was utterly humiliating for Rebecca. Her character was ripped to pieces. She cried throughout the trial. I just feel like she was, she felt like she was ripped apart. She was attacked on the stand and, you know, pretty rightly so for the vast majority of her actions, but she did not have a fun time. She had a torrid time. I'm sure she regretted bringing it to court, but bring it to court, she did. Despite having multiple opportunities, apparently, to not go down that route. But I think, you know, she was obviously desperately hoping to to be found innocent and then hoping that this was going to save her reputation and her career in the media. So Rebecca was found guilty. They think she done it, governor. Colleen was found innocent of libel and Rebecca was found guilty of being an all around terrible person. And she has now been ordered to pay three million pounds, three million pounds for selling some stories and refusing to admit that that's what you did, three million pounds down the drain. Now, apparently the Vardis are worth 12 million according to these tabloids, but you know, maybe someone's selling them some lies too. I don't know. So, you know, if that is the case and they are worth 12 million, that's a hefty chunk down the drain, isn't it? Just to sit in a courtroom with Colleen Rooney dragging you to filth. So Rebecca's not done there. She's not done. She's going to appeal. She wants to go back and she wants to appeal. She put out a very defiant Instagram, giving us all the finger that'll teach us. And basically saying, you know, that she will be back. She's going to appeal, which I just, it's a very obvious that she did it. Okay, and actually, even if it was Caroline and Rebecca didn't know about it, Colleen said it was Rebecca Vardy's account, which it was. That's a scientific fact. So I don't even know, even if she could prove it was Caroline and not her, that Colleen didn't say something that was factually correct. It was Rebecca Vardy's account. There's no denying that. So really appealing it would just be a terrible thing to do because she's already been completely destroyed as far as her character, her moral compass, what kind of a person and a friend she is. And no one is gonna touch that woman with a barge pole now other than perhaps celebrity big brother. I don't think they'd have her back in the jungle to be honest. But ultimately this court case was career suicide and she threw, threw three million down the drain for the sake of trying to like win in a row with Colleen Rooney and Good luck to anyone who takes on that, let me tell you. So there you have it, the torrid tale of Wagatha Christie, the musical. I'm sure it is gonna be a musical one day. I'm absolutely convinced this is coming to an Odeon or at least a Netflix near you very, very soon. But please tell me, who do you believe? Are you team Colleen or are you team Rebecca Vardy? Whose story do you believe? Do you care? Have you heard of this? What's going on even? Please let us know what your thoughts are in the comments section down below. Thank you so much for joining me today for this slightly different video to my usual. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.